Oh, you know. You know what you're doing. I mean, please. <laughs> this man knows exactly what he's doing. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life, it's episode 347. We are here to preview AEW All Out and WWE Payback and to talk about our friend Phil and the fallout from AEW All In in Wembley Stadium. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Welcome, Crab fans. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. So here's the thing about AEW All In. (laughs) It was uh, a show that people seem to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People seem to like it because it was uh, polite and rarely late. Mm -hmm. Only about 10 minutes late, apparently. They um they did an unadvertised pre-show before the pre-show. <laughs> Just they went on the air an hour early for no reason. And then they delivered the pre-show. And um all anyone could talk about coming out of the show was not the fact that they had set the record probably for most our highest paid attendance in the history of pro wrestling. They not could not talk about the fact that they were coming back to Wembley Stadium the following year to try to repeat their success. All anyone could talk about CM Punk and Jack Perry scrapping before the show began. <laughs> This this company is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Phil CM Punk keeps on giving. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely amazing. He and Jack Perry have been suspended after fighting, mm-hmm. <laughs> having a physical altercation mm-hmm. backstage, apparently close enough to their boss. That monitors fell over on their boss. <laughs> I don't know. There's so we we break down the matches in a minute, but uh, obviously all anyone cares about is that CM Punk continues to do CM Punk things. He and and Jungle Jack have been suspended the week of a pay per view in Chicago, mm-hmm. where Punk was probably supposed to be in the main event. And he still may be. We don't know. Uh, there's there's many things. There are many moving parts and pieces to this here as we approach the weekend. Just overall general thoughts on uh, on our friend. <laughs> well, this is what I like to call vintage Phil. Uh, yeah, this is uh, <laughs> what a wonderful yeah. way to start the show. Uh well, as as uh, and yeah, as anyone who watched the show knows, uh, F- Punk and Joe let off the show, and depending on who you ask, he almost didn't go out for his match. Yep, um, I have not seen that disputed by the Punk camp that he threatened to quit or that he uh, threatened to not go out and and wrestle. Um, I have not seen it disputed uh, that he was loudly uh, berating his boss in his personal locker room <laughs> with harsh language. I've not seen that uh, disputed by the punk camp. Um, and it's definitely not in dispute, even by the punk camp, though the punk version, I think, did, uh, did surface a day or so after the event, that uh, the physicality of this, uh, of this confrontation, this brouhaha, if I could invoke a little <laughs> French, <laughs> uh, uh, was the physicality a uh, part of this was in fact initiated by Mr. Punk again, <laughs> uh, almost exactly one year to the last time that uh, someone had an issue with Punk and 
exchanged bad words with him and he uh, uh, initiated physicality there as well. I don't believe that's in dispute or at least not in, I have not seen it disputed, I should say. Uh, so that all to be said, it's, it's, he's, he's the best guy <laughs> in, in the whole company <laughs> because he gives us so much, so much stuff like this to talk about. I don't think we did a show the week that like this Jack Perry punk riff started um, based on them disagreeing over a spot Jack wanted to do in like a pre-tape segment because uh, Jack was taking a vacation the following week. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, I don't I mean, I don't think we need to recap the whole thing. But yes, Jack Perry on live television uh, made a reference to the fact that he and Hook were, in fact, using real glass. And uh, Punk took issue with that. Uh, I don't think any of this is in dispute. And and I don't think it's in dispute that or I have not seen it disputed that Punk was uh, the initiator of the physicality uh, portion. So, so. So the story goes, Jungle Boy takes a bump on real glass, or right before he takes a bump on real glass, he looks into the camera and says, it's real glass, Crimea River, or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. He goes backstage. He's Punk is in the gorilla position because he's about to go out for his main card opening match. He allegedly asks Jack Perry, do we have a problem? Hmm. something that um, he's asked more than one person now since he's been back this summer Mm -hmm. Perry apparently said something along the lines of yes and told Punk to do something about it they shoved one another and then Punk put Jungle Jack in a chokehold (laughs) As they were shoving one another, monitors fell on Tony Khan. (laughs) (laughs) Punk threatened to quit, threatened to walk out, had to be talked down by Samoa Joe and talked into going out for their match. Is the story going around? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) This is one of those programs where it's like there's no baby face in this program. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jungle Jack was wrong for uh, antagonizing the world's meanest man on glo- <laughs> on global television. Sure. Um, Punk uh, antagonizing Jack by saying, do we have a problem or do you have a problem with me or something mm-hmm. along those lines? Mm, not something a, a real good guy would probably do. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Jungle Jack saying, uh, do something about it. Do something about it. <laughs> By golly, he did it. <laughs> and then he did. The man is undefeated in locker room fights in AEW. You got to give him yeah. that. Yeah, real fights, not so much, but the locker room is his environment. You know, it's like his uh, his boiler room. You know, he's just. <laughs> he's beating up theater kids, though. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Theater kids who didn't train with whichever Gracie brother he <laughs> he trained with. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so yeah, this was gonna happen, right? This was gonna happen. The w- the when the the solution, and ultimately, as we have said before, this all falls at the feet of the guy in charge for not for not kiboshing this sooner. And uh, it falls at the feet of uh, like we we knew this was going to happen. We knew this. I mean, maybe we didn't know this was going to happen, but like it was clear the the thing that seemed to to start the floodgates was when the the week after collision, one week he made some anti hangman comments, uh, and it also at the on the same night that hangman was apparently told not to go to the building. Some people said that he was told not to go because Punk didn't want him there. Some people said management was just afraid he and Punk would get into it, so they moved it. Who knows? Could be any number of a thousand things. But And then, as you alluded to, there was stuff about him and Ryan Nemeth and him banning 
head of talent relations, Chris Daniels, from going to his show. And that's when the Jungle Boy stuff. So it's like we knew the the bad feelings between, you know, Team Elite and Team Punk were not uh, were not uh, were not uh, going away. And then you put them all on a transatlantic flight and put them all in the same building. And, you know, young, young Jack Perry trying to, uh, you know, stand up for himself, perhaps. And uh, this is this is the result. This is the result of, yes, this this very, uh, you know, toxic and faux macho environment that sometimes still exists in pro wrestling uh, uh, locker rooms, especially this one. So I, I don't know. I don't who knows what's going to happen now. As you said, they're both suspended. There's a ongoing investigation. Tony Khan on his uh, on his uh, conference call said uh, he hopes to have an answer by by Sunday as to whether or not CM Punk will be appearing at All Out in Chicago. So looking forward to that for sure. Yep. And then the uh, the CM Punk side has uh, turned to their uh, their house organ, the <laughs> House of Wrestling website after Tony Khan spoke today. And uh, in at our spoke spoke at his part at his uh, conference call that said that he hopes to have clarity by Sunday as to whether CM Punk is going to be at all out. CM Punk's camp leaked to House of Wrestling, and he is likely not going to be there. <laughs> Whatever that means, it means he's angling for some concessions, more concessions. I'm assuming from. <laughs> his his side i don't <laughs> look even even if you think that punk is 100 percent the right and look i think he has some very legitimate gripes around all of all of this stuff but like at a certain point what else is there to give him other than like <laughs> firing jungle boy <laughs> like what else is there to give him he has his own show that he basically books himself <laughs> And he gets to choose who does or doesn't work on it. Yeah. Uh, like what what else is there? What other carrots are there to dangle? I mean, I guess you could give him more money. <laughs> uh, but like what else, what other carrots are there to dangle to uh to entice punk? Or is this just him kind of, you know, marking his territory, stomping his feet, you know, trying to have the loudest bark in a in a week that has been a Let's let's be charitable and say a mixed bag for his uh, for his <laughs> PR for his uh, his personal reputation. You know, I don't know. I think he wants a steal back in buildings. I, I think that's <laughs> pretty clearly something that he's wanted all along. Um, <laughs> he already got a steal back pay for the time he was fired. <laughs> <laughs> He already got a steel rehired and uh, working remotely. <laughs> Naturally. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think the only, the clear next step is a steel back at the building on Saturdays for collision. I can see that. That's yeah. Okay. That's, that's probably that's the, the only thing one. left. That's the only thing left. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get, uh, which was it? Do Sir Domino. That was his friend. <laughs> You gonna get that guy hired? Uh, maybe. Uh, although I feel, I feel like he he's broken up with anyone he's known for more than ten years. So. <laughs> so. Him and Joe, they're all right. They, maybe not as much after this weekend, but <laughs> yeah. but they did take a picture together after their match. So I guess they're not they're not they're not ready to. He's not ready to fight Joe at the very least. It can't can't be too bad. Um. Yeah. So that's the latest uh, CM Punk stuff. So the backup plan, apparently, if CM Punk is not going to be at this pay per view on su- on Sunday, is seventy year old Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. <laughs> Tony Khan tweeted after his television show ended on Wednesday night. He tweeted that. Ricky Starks is going to be on collision on Saturday to challenge Ricky the Dragon Steamboat to a strap match 
for all out the next day. Uh huh. <laughs> Which to me sure seems like an angle uh, to bring back CM Punk. You would think. <laughs> but I think the alternative is Ricky does a match there where he doesn't do too much bumping. Yeah, I mean, he already took the the whipping, so yeah, I think yeah. he feel like he can he can safely do that without him having to come off the top rope, you know. <laughs> Ricky the Dragon <laughs> Steamboat. <laughs> Ooh, oh it boy! Two thousand twenty three. Remember, remember when like he almost died in WWE like ten years ago? <laughs> yes, I do. I know he did like a an indie match like a year or so ago, but come on, let's let's maybe not tempt fate here. He had he had his retirement le- match last November on a big time wrestling show, and it was uh, Steamboat and FTR against Jay Lethal, Nick Aldis, and I forget the third guy. Was it, it uh, was it Ricky Morton? I thought Ricky Martin no. was involved somehow. No, it was it was a young person. Oh, okay. Relatively speaking. <laughs> uh, Jay Lethal? Jay, did I already say him? Yeah, you Jay, said Le- Jay Lethal. <laughs> Jay Lethal, Nick Aldis. It's gonna drive me crazy now if I don't if I don't find it. So I have to find this real quick. But mm-hmm. anyway, we can discuss um all in, which happened. Uh it was definitely <laughs> uh a happening. And uh, good t- good on AEW for putting 81,000 paid and close to 90,000 total, apparently, in the building in Wembley Stadium. Very ambitious. Um, on the pre-show, Adam Cole and MJF won the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles, and Hook beat Jack Perry for the FTW Championship. CM Punk beat Samoa Joe to kick off the main card. What you think of Punk and Joe? I enjoyed that match. Yeah, I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was probably Punk's best match since he's been back. Um, I like the Kojima match a lot too. But um, yeah, I thought this was just it was a good it was a good pro wrestling match, and you know it, it felt it was a good opener. Like I thought it, I thought it was a really really fun match. I think I feel like Punk's been uneven in his return matches i think he's wrestled a lot i think he's looked good at times and other times like i I didn't think much of that first ricky starks match he did um so i uh i thought this was like a a return to form for him as far as just having a good hard-hitting uh exciting match to start the show for two old guys they have a a really good match i thought Mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah they, they didn't just stand and chop each other either like this was they worked yeah. really hard. Uh, the third man, by the way, was. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a, a hint. He has the most beautiful cerulean blue underpants you've ever seen. <laughs> My, our boy Brock Anderson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, brightest, bluest underpants you've ever seen. <laughs> man, so bad at wrestling that the Luchasaurus <laughs> had to slow down for him. Oh, Rock Anderson. He couldn't go up for a choke slam. <laughs> yep. <It's... laughs> oh man. Gas. <laughs> couldn't take like a backdrop. <laughs> yeah. He's really bad at wrestling. Um, okay. Then uh what else happened at at, at all in? Uh the Bullet Club Gold beat uh the Golden Elite. Why is everything gotta be golden? Jim <laughs> Ross is on commentary for the early, early part of this show, by the way. And uh he was in rare form. <laughs> yeah, just a certain they get, and they gave him like stuff that you knew he would hate too, which I think is very funny. Like uh, I guess that's just how the card was shaped, but uh yeah, this was uh, you know, it was it was a good match, but it was a it was not a match that <laughs> Jim Ross particularly cared for. And uh yeah, he was just openly complaining about it for a yeah. good portion of it. You know, they they went 20 plus minutes, which seemed long considering it was a match just to set up a match on this week's pay-per-view. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think it was spectacular. And it was one of those ones where it wasn't quite the pace where it's all action. And so it's just ex- exciting, exciting. It was like it was a lot of just big moves. But then like everybody lays around for a minute 
and then get up and then everybody does a big crazy sequence and then everybody lays down. So I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought the pacing could have uh, either you, you do a little bit less and you can have a longer match or you do more and you cut the time in half. Right. FTR beat the young bucks. Uh, did, did anyone think that Phil was going to <laughs> let the elite beat FTR? Of course not. Not, not on this show. No, I thought it was yeah, it was it was a good match. I don't think it was uh quite at the level maybe of their their last match together, but it was good. It was good. Um and they're I guess they're going to set up a young bucks heel turn it looks like based on the the finish of that match and uh they're now they're doing we'll get to what they're doing it all out, but feels like we're setting up for maybe more matches, maybe a feud between these guys that it's a little bit longer rather than just another one-off match. Something I've noticed about the Young Bucks is every time they speak, they turn themselves heel. <laughs> so that's probably for the best. Unfortunately, this means baby face FTR. <laughs> and uh, every time they speak, they turn themselves <laughs> heel. <laughs> All right. Someone said this, but you know who should really be thanking uh, Phil? And and Jungle Jack is uh, Cash Wheeler. <laughs> yeah, because who the hell remembers that he got arrested for flashing a, a gun at somebody days he's before facing, this show? He's facing a felony charge. Yeah, nobody's nobody's talking about that anymore. So he should he should send uh, send his good buddy Phil a, a a fruit basket or something. Best friends beat the Blackpool Combat Club in a stadium stampede match. This is about what you would think. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I a big, wild, crazy weapons brawl uh, to set up a singles match at the Chicago show. Naturally, Soraya won the women's title. <laughs> well, this you're was... paying her all that money, aren't you? <laughs> I think that's pretty much what we led with in in predicting what would happen here. Like we can make a case for everyone winning, and the case for Soraya winning is uh, they're paying her an awful lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it was look, it was it was a nice moment. It makes for a nice story in that she was completely out of wrestling a year and some change ago or whatever, and. Now she's wrestling on the biggest or one of the highest paid attendance shows of all time and has her family all out there and they paid for her to come out to We Will Rock You by Queen. Um, so it was I'm sure it was a very nice moment for uh, for her. Um, it's just a shame that that pro- I mean, she probably just she probably won't wrestle any more than she already does. So it's not that big of a deal. But, uh, you know. Would have I would have maybe put it on one of the two people in that match who are good at are good wrestlers, but that's that's me, you know. Yeah. Darby and Sting beat Christian Cage and Swerve in the coffin match. It was coffin match. Mm-hmm. Sting Sting did a Joker, did his Joker paint, and spoke in a British accent. So and five wore, stars. <laughs> wore a red shirt. He sure did. Yeah. Um, Osprey beat Jericho. It was fine. Nice, <laughs> ni- nice work, everyone. <laughs> yeah, like it was. It was fine. It was. I would say among the better Jericho singles matches I have seen in the past five years, and probably among the worst Will Osprey matches I have seen in the past five years. <laughs> My favorite part. It's a tie. Between uh, Jericho lion salting onto his own head <laughs> and um, Jericho trying to go or teasing a lion salt. It's supposed to be a lion salt into a cutter or a bloody Sunday by Osprey, but Osprey was facing the wrong way. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> These are professionals. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just. <laughs> Maybe Jericho should remember that he's 52. It's okay. You know? Yeah. You don't have to try to do a backflip to a guy who's not looking at you. Whatever. The acclaimed and Billy Gunn, the badass, have won the trios championships. They beat the House of Black. Everyone seemed to enjoy themselves. Scissoring. 
They yeah. uh they they scissor me timbered uh Julia Hart. <laughs> I don't trust anyone's intentions in that company when it comes to Julia Hart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh hey, you, like like we said last week, the acclaim deserved a spot on this show because they got themselves over and hey, they got their moment, so good for them. MJF beat Adam Cole, no one turned on anyone. Mm-hmm. They hugged to a tremendous pop to end the show. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I we talked about it last week. Uh, we, I believe, predicted that they were going to win the tag belts and then not do the turn at this show. <laughs> um, I understand the thought process of this is your biggest show ever, at least attendance wise. So you should shoot a big angle. Uh, but I also think one, I don't feel like we've reached the peak from a crowd reaction standpoint of these guys together. And, uh, two, I also think for your first time doing a big stadium show like this, maybe you want it to have a happy ending and you want it to be just like a celebration of your company in the main event and not a, not a big swerve ending. So I was fine with this. The match itself, it, it was a little it veered a little too much into NXT Roman Reigns main events for me. Sure. A lot of, a lot of acting, a lot of monologuing. They literally like took microphones and cut promos during the match. Um, so that's a little bit too much for me, but it was good. It was a good match. And to their credit, this crowd had already seen everything, including MJF at Adam Cole. And they were still just living and dying. They were as hot for that main event as they were anything on the entire show. So good, good on those two fellas. All right. This sets up their second pay-per-view in, uh, in eight days. <laughs> the very next Sunday they have uh, here this coming weekend, Labor Day weekend in Chicago, they have a pay-per-view and I kid you not. This is the card. Luchasaurus, right now, probably main eventing. <laughs> Luchasaurus versus Darby Allen for the TNT title. Miro versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Oof. All right. That is a uh, rampage ass match. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Chris Statlander defending the TBS title against Ruby Soho. Uh, I like everyone in that match. Uh, it's it's a TV match. Mm-hmm. Uh, Orange Cassidy defending the international title against John Moxley. That's another main event candidate. That would be what I would put on last. I don't think I don't think anybody's having a better match than them on this show. Yeah. Um, Kenny Omega versus Kaneske Takeshita. No stipulation, just just a match. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Bullet Club Gold, the Guns, and. Uh, Jay White and Juice Robinson versus FTR and the Young Bucks in an eight-man tag. Okay. Um, as you mentioned, that seems to be, I don't know, setting up more Young Bucks uh, uh, FTR stuff, I guess. I I, I don't know. Uh, Adam called MGF defending their Ring of Honor tag team titles against, spoiler alert, the winners of a battle royal on... Um, r- this week's rampage. Uh, it's the Dark Order. <laughs> hmm. You know, I hadn't even bothered to look up who they were. <laughs> who they were facing? I was like, "Oh, Ethan will tell me. It'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine." And I hope you weren't. Uh, yeah, John Silver and Alex Reynolds will be wrestling. Uh, Adam Cole and MJF. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> weren't, weren't, they, weren't they doing some lore with the hangman and the young bucks like two months ago and then they just sort of disappeared yeah probably i i don't know man they, I, they did they beat hangman and the young bucks <laughs> in a trios match on well it wouldn't have been collision so it must have been rampage i remember watching that at like 11 a.m the morning after it happened they're heels now i mean mm-hmm. for sure but i don't know um, so uh, Adam Cole and MJF defending their tag titles, no singles match for the world champion on this pay per view. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samoa Joe defending the Ring of Honor TV title against Shane Taylor, the winner of a uh, a tournament. 
to determine <laughs> Samoa Joe's next challenger. So we have one, two, three AEW title matches and two Ring of Honor title matches on this mm-hmm. show. And also uh, the only other thing announced to this point, Eddie Kingston and Katsuyori Shibata versus K- Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler, Utah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. <laughs> you know, $50. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, no, Look, it's one of those things where you could, if you wanted to look at this sympathetically, which I do not, uh, you could be like, well, they didn't know the punk stuff was going to happen. Plus there's been like, there might be, a, there may or may not be a COVID outbreak in the locker room and people were stranded in Florida because of the hurricane. And so they were kind of just, they're not sure who's going to be able to show up when and whatever. So like you could give them a little sec. On the other hand, nobody forced them to book shows two weekends in a row. <laughs> uh, and nobody forced them to ask their fans to pay $50 for those shows. So I do not cut them any slack. This is a pretty lackluster card, and uh, to say the least. And yeah, no, not not really feeling, not really feeling any sympathy uh, for them. And I would say the only other thing I would say is that in previous times when thing when things were were looking a little rough, uh, Tony did have a good ability to just like pull a, like an an internet fan like dream match out of his butt. <laughs> And I feel yeah. like we're not even getting one of those. Like we don't have a Suzuki versus Brian Danielson announced on 11, 11 minutes notice coming right. on this show. I don't think so. It's hard to hard to get excited, even as just a even if you're just purely a fan of the AEW in ring product. Like I think Moxley and Moxley and Arch Cassidy, I think will be awesome. I think that'll be a very good match. Um, and there's other stuff on the show that could be good and, and, and maybe even over deliver and be great, but yeah, ask it for $50 for this a week after you've, you've just done a pay-per-view. Um, that's, that's preposterous. And again, nobody forced them to do this. Uh, so, uh, good luck to them. Uh, they've made, they've made their bed, uh, as, as it is said. They've made their bed, as it is said. A beautiful rhyme, my friend. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Um, WWE also has pay-per-view this weekend. <laughs> their premium live event on Peacock this Saturday, going head-to-head with Collision, naturally. This is the most B-show lineup of B-show lineups there is, uh, I mean, except, unless you're me, and then it's like, well, this is one of the most anticipated cards in the history of the business. <laughs> uh, Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus in a steel cage match. I've thought about driving to Pittsburgh for this. I probably won't, because then I would have to drive back from Pittsburgh on, on like a Sunday morning. It's like, I'm not doing that. But uh Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the World Heavyweight Championship. Rhea Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez for the Women's World Championship. Rey Mysterio versus Austin Theory for the United States Championship. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus The Judgment Days, Finn Balor and Damian Priest in a Steel City Street Fight for the Tag Team Championship. And LA Knight versus The Miz in a singles match, and the Grayson Waller effect with guest Cody Rhodes. Well, there you go. So we're just we're just putting house shows on TV now, huh? Looks that way. Jeez, S- certainly looks that way. We're just this sending is... a camera crew with the Saturday Night Raw <laughs> house show crew. Yeah, this is not this is not an A show. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> the uh, and I I saw like the uh, the get in price mm-hmm. for the uh, the secondary market in Pittsburgh or something is like three hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> they're they're so hot right now. They can't they can't they can't. <laughs> they're trying to punt this show, <laughs> and the fans will not allow it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, there's that's that's the old wrestling cliche, right? It's like when you're. When you're hot, you really can't do anything wrong. And when you're cold, you can't do anything right. So 
they're on they're uh they're enjoying the fruits of what has been a very good year for them um yeah like i think a lot of the stuff on the show again it could be a it could be a pretty fun show in the ring i mean like sammy and sammy and kevin in a weapons match with the judgment day guys will be fun and uh i i think becky and trish will go all out to try to have like a a classic on this show um and then you got some other stuff Miz seems very motivated for this as he's looking. I mean, he and LA Knight are about the same age. I was going to say he's looking at his replacement, but they're basically the same <laughs> age. Uh, so they're going to be in the business probably for the same exact amount of time at this point. Yeah. Well, Grayson Waller is the Miz's replacement and he's ah, also on this show, but just in a talk show segment. <laughs> yeah, it's that's great. There's, there's so many Miz's on this show. <laughs> I know fans of LA Knight would say I am under I am very much undercutting him by saying he's just another miss. He's not. But uh yeah, this show is not does not lighten anybody's world on fire like you I think you have pointed out uh the last couple of weeks. They're really trying to make a judgment day drama a thing uh in the same way that the bloodline stuff is. So, uh, you know, we'll we'll get the next the next twisted turn in that and then hey we'll see if uh we'll see if nakamura can uh can turn it on you know big main event for the work the the world championship they've given him a lot he's been good in these pre-tapes that they've been doing the last couple of weeks so hey can he have a good match for the first time since when was that same he's ain't mentioned nxt <laughs> 2017 or whatever yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. He should be more motivated than ever before, but we don't know. Low bar, but yes. Yes. All right. Um, I think that's about everything. Yeah, quite a lot has happened. That's, that's quite enough. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, everybody. Well, Enjoy your two pay-per-views this weekend. Two pay-per-views this weekend. <laughs> this oh, AEW is coming back with another pay-per-view next month too. Oh or, yeah, uh, the October first. Mm-hmm. So good for them. That's oh. and they whatever happened not running against the NFL because they're clearly going to run against the NFL. Yeah, I was going to say that's a Sunday night show, right? Sure is October the first. Oh. Yeah. I hate to think that Tony Khan lied to us. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to believe that. Mm. For the first well. time ever. <laughs> oh, no. uh, Mercedes was on uh, All In, by the way. Yeah. To me, the funniest possible outcome here is uh, Mercedes money ends up back in WWE after AEW flies her to London <laughs> and puts her on puts her on their biggest pay-per-view of all time and just repeatedly shows her in the crowd. Uh-huh. I was uh, going to say that's if you don't have her under contract, nothing makes that f- that phone blow up quite like showing up on AEW television without a contract. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't know her contractual status. Tony Khan was asked about her during his media call this week and he um was like if uh, when she's healthy that's someone I'd really like to work with <laughs> it's like that is not sounding like you have her signed but <laughs> no but, uh, but but I don't know we'll see I, I don't know she might still I, I don't know before she showed up in London on Sunday morning I was under the impression that she was closer to returning to WWE at some point than she was to going to AEW at some point. Mm-hmm. But I've uh I've uh I've played all sides on this and I've always said that she'll end up in AEW at some point. And I've also said that she'll end up back in WWE at some point. So uh I'm uh I'm playing every side so uh, <laughs> I will I will always come out on top. <laughs> That's right. Hey like she can do she can do a couple hardcore matches in AEW, get those thumbtack spots that she and Bailey have wanted to do <laughs> for for ten years out of her system, and then go back and 
you know, be a millionaire in WWE again. Yeah. If if they'll pay her. And <laughs> hey. right. And if not, <laughs> conventions. <laughs> Pick, you know, pick your spots on conventions for the next, you know, and, and do your acting, whatever you do on the, on the side. And that's, that's a, that's a living. That's a full, I mean, not, this is going to make you mad that I compare them, but like, go out, like Mick Foley's made a very good living. Just, just making appearances for like 20 years. So like, it's, you don't, you don't really need, that can be your main source of income. If you're, if you're uh, in demand enough. And I think she would be. I am wounded. <laughs> the difference too, though, is that Mick has never said no to mm-hmm. a convention. Very true. Do you remember <laughs> Mick was mad that uh, WWE? He said he only re-signed his Legend Steel because WWE promised him that Mattel would do a three faces of Foley three pack, and then they did it, but they made it three individual, like separate packaged figures. Oh no! I didn't. And know. So he I... was. Uh, he was a little bit miffed about that. Huh? I did not know that. I've. Uh, uh... Mick is always going to be unhappy about something. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a sensitive lad in, in, uh, in many ways. <laughs> Mick and Brett, I always take everything they say with a grain of salt, given the uh, the head damage that they've both undergone. Sure. And uh, always uh, give them the benefit of the d- benefit of the doubt. There's only All one right. category where I don't always give Mick the benefit of the doubt. Well, he's always got a lot of photos on his social media with his hands all over women. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the- around their shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the show ended eight minutes ago, but we've been talking now <laughs> for eight more minutes. So, until uh, next time, everyone. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling world. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. is the only thing playing on your Spotify right now. (laughs) (laughs) We are no longer in the seventh inning. (laughs) We are now in the ninth. I tuned in to hear hear a baseball game and all you've been talking about is french fries. For the last six innings, all you've been talking about is french fries. So I'm entering what I like to call everyone else calls this the fall season. I like to call it the summer of Liam because uh, this is, this is the point in the year where I save up all of my vacation time. And then I'm just like in and out basically the rest of the year. (laughs) Sounds like a nice strategy. It's like you get all, you start getting all these holidays between September and, and, and December. And so you just, you take a Friday here, maybe a Tuesday there. All of a sudden, you got five days off. <laughs> and uh, you do that there, doing it on the Columbus Day holiday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm taking probably the week between Christmas and New Year's. And I might take a little time around Thanksgiving, too. It's like, that's the thing. Like, in June and July, I am, uh, for lack of a better word, miserable. Yeah, because I'm just been working pretty much nonstop all year for you know the first seven months of the year. Um, but the reward <laughs> is that the last quarter I get to just just you know take off every two weeks or so, and uh, it's a little not quite that frequent, but it's worked. It's like I I'm I've yet to do the equations on if how happy I am in the last quarter of the year makes up for how unhappy I sometimes am in like the middle of the summer. But once you get to this part of the year, it always feels like the right decision. It's your rest time. (laughs) That's right. It's time for a reward. (laughs)
Phil. Oh, Phil. I try to keep on keeping on.